We are in the new Zoom location. I'm here with Lisa Belter, and this oh. is the, what's the name of our show? Shift the Narrative Now. Shift the Narrative, sorry, just shift the narrative. And so we've been doing this in, in uh, ScreenYard, StreamYard? StreamYard. <laughs> Streamyard. Streamyard. Yep. And uh, we've had about 30 shows with about 60 views. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're changing our format. We're moving into Zoom so we can use this nice backgrounds, which changes right. the, the format right. quite radically. Makes my hair look like I'm in the 80s. Like it's quite like it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know how you feel. <laughs> sure you do. Well, it's just if I wear my hat, then it kind of doesn't quite always work. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> That's funny. It's like hands moving in and out of space. Woo, there's my chair. There's not my chair. There's my chair. <laughs> so it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I got to close it. Where are you going? <laughs> that are you going? I said to close the close the door. Oh, okay. So, what's happening in Calgary? Nothing much. I think we're Jason Kenny's announcing some new lockdowns today. Fuck. I think I'm pretty sure he's going to say curfew and no patios or something. He's he's going to do new no curf. He's going to do a curfew. That's my that's my guess. I think. Like. Like, you know, people are just like, they should get mad pretty soon to be like, really? We're doing curfews now? Okay, let's, we're all staying in anyways and watching TV at night. So now we'll just stay in more and watch TV at night. Just won't go getting munchies at the 7-Eleven. I don't know. Yeah, but what about like Texas where they, you know, you can, there's no masks. Everyone can do what they want. Yeah. Uh, they're doing fine. But in the places where they got the lockdown and the masks, you know, it's, it's getting worse. Yeah, I know. I, it's all bullshit. We all know the people that know know it's bullshit. So, <laughs> I, I did listen to a really cool. So I'm just gonna find it. This podcast I was on. Uh, Luke, his name is Luke Story. I don't know if you heard of him, and he does these cool podcasts every once in a while with these guys. And his name is Doctor Howell. Doctor Howell, mm -hmm. and he just he had he talked about. You know, since a lot of people aren't talking about the nanobots like that are inside of the vaccines. And it doesn't matter if they're real or not real. The idea is that if they are, what do we do about it? And he just he just said, well, you know, there's nanobots. It says right on the Madeira, right on their Moderna website, it says tech new technology, blah, blah, blah. Right on their website. I'm like, interesting that he found that. But he said you could use a thing called radio radionics. Radionic. Radio, radionic? Yeah. You could treat them by the disease by doing whatever is opposite. And this guy was into cool shit that I even heard of where you stick balloons up the nose and then you inflate them and it pushes back all the connective tissue that's been, you know, destroyed by falling on your head or falling on your face uh -huh. or getting, being hit in the face. And that it leaves a huge amount of pressure and therefore your head can balance on your neck properly. And then your body, the rest of your body can do what it needs to do. But until that point, he says, you know, chiropractic is not going to do anything. Just cranial sacral won't do anything. But he explained it from a balancing, like your whole purpose of your head is to be balanced on your neck. And if it can't do that, then you're going to waste a lot of tension, a lot of resources trying to keep your, your head on your neck. It's really cool. It's a really good, it's a really good interview. I haven't, it's like, oh, I haven't heard that. Mm. Yeah. Did you know I was banned from Facebook? No, really? Yeah, I'm in day three or four. Um, oh. I, I had a, a meme of Frodo with the, the virus, with the, oh. the heading of one lie to rule them oh. all. Can you, set, can you show me? Um, I don't think, let me see if I- uh, Can you like share your screen and just show me what it looks like? No, well, you know Frodo Baggins, right? From Lord of the Rings? Yeah, yeah like creepy. So he's just, he's holding a picture, like the coronavirus and the heading is one, lie to rule them all like the main thing oh, in oh. Lord of the rings is one the one ring to rule them all right oh okay, no. okay. so <laughs> that's the, the like frodo's the, going to throw the ring into mount doom 
the ring oh. is the main thing in Lord of the Rings. And so the ring has been replaced by the virus and the idea is one lie to rule them all. Oh, of. okay. All right, cool. So it's, it's, a good, it's a good meme. I like it, but uh, seven days. Seven days and it's you know, like- Why, because it was controversial? Like what did they tell you it was what? What was the reason? They just said you have broken community standards and because I've broken them before, last time was three days, now it's seven days. So every time gets worse. And each time, the other time I had a swastika in the sky because they had the, yeah. the, the big bear in four directions. Yeah. I got three days for a swastika in, no, yeah, three days for a swastika, swastika oh. in the sky. Even if you like reversed it as the Buddha swastika, would they? It would There's no on. correlation. It was just, all it was was the big dipper in four directions together. So it looked like a swastika, but it was the freaking oh. stars in the sky. This got me bad for three days. Wow, you're a troublemaker. <laughs> they, they love to do that. I don't know what the, like they must have good analytic shits, right? Like to capture images and what's going on. Think of all the posts every day that they catch that shit. It's pretty sophisticated. Well, I'm sure they're paying people and just, if, and, and then I would flag the people and then I'd wait for something that whatever, and then you nab them. <laughs> like, like, well, they, they, yeah, they X made one of my posts on my superior way page where I had, I showed a bit of my nipple or something. I was had a rose, whatever. And they like, you can't show nipples. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I showed a, a body torso, somebody's, my breasts and a flower and a nipple. And, but all the girls can show their ass and their booty and their tits hanging out almost. And, really wow like that's 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 really interesting you can't show oh, okay all right just certain protocols you know? i think well whenever i posted something else one time oh i had a picture of a, my waist and i put a tape measure around it and said hey you know i've lost two inches blah 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 you can't do that that this might feel uncomfortable to some viewers <laughs> okay right sure all right like, what was I going to say about that? Well, you can't say anything. They, they say, would you like to uh, debate? Go again? And the button wouldn't work. <laughs> so they, they give you the choice if you want to debate it, but it doesn't work. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So why don't you just keep, can't you just keep creating new pages under somebody else's name? Oh, I could. I mean, it's to me, it, it's like a good pattern breaker to stop me with, from my addiction to Facebook. Like I, I could use that time many other places. I, I started reading again. <laughs> and there's so much more depth to reading as opposed to scanning comments, reading memes and watching videos, like oh, spirit, okay. spiritually, you know, like I'm, I'm reading some just brilliantly beautiful stuff. It's just like riveting and it's knowledge is seeping in in a very different way. But like then, what? Here, I'll get it for you, just wait. Oh, hey. Before I forget, I had, so I did this meditation last night and then the guy says to make sure you ask for whatever, like to ask to have, you know, lucid dreams so that you can keep communicating with the spirits or whatever you're up to. Right. And so I didn't quite have any really lucid dreams, but I had a dream where I was in this place and it was like, I was on a bank or on a big boat or I couldn't tell where I was, but there was all this snow and the snow was all covered in black soot. And it was like, cause they were doing something with the air and everybody was hanging around, but we were all smoking pot. It was the, everybody was, watching, everybody was just all these young people and weird things like big giants and they were, you know, chained to balls. Like it was weird. Like it was, you know, and I, I remember like talking to somebody like, you're kind of cool. You remind me of something, but it was weird. I remember waking up thinking, well, that's not really, what kind of dream? That was really whacked, man. Like that was, I don't normally have weird, that weird of dreams. And then the week before I had a dream where I was marching a cavalry. Like I was literally the head of a cavalry, like in, you know, 1500s and we're like, we're going to war. And it was like real, like I was the person like going out to war. Like it was, woke up, like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like don't normally dream that way. Huh, could have been past lives maybe? In my, uh, that one was a past life. This one, I'm not sure what the fuck that was all about. That was like way out there. But I did, when I did his, you know about the, tetrahedron you know about the tetrahedron of course but i'd forgotten that it's actually a, a, a triangle which is a symbol for encompassing space the triangle is a symbol for encompassing space he said 
And that's why he used this old Sanskrit meditation, which was called um, my, my Nama, my, my Namaha, my Namaha. And he said that was the tetrahedron, my Namaha, oh. my Namaha. And that if you did, you make a tetrahedron in 3D in your mind and then put two of them together, reverse them, and then you swirl them in gold in your head. Like that's, he's getting this from somewhere. I don't know where, what he does. That's but the Merkaba. That, yeah, that's the Merkaba. But I hadn't, I, I heard it, but I just didn't know what it looked like. So I'm not, maybe that's why I had weird dreams. Cause I'm like going into these weird, like, I don't know if it's healing or if it's showing me something, but I don't normally have that weird of dreams. So you were shown the Merkaba? No, he said to put the Merkaba in your, in your pineal gland and to, tw I twirled it. Uh, both of them go in both directions and then i started rotating and twirling and trying to do like the dharma wheel but about, he calls it your spaceship right yeah. and i was like okay well i'll try that I'll, I'll i'll go out there i get that we can connect in space but what do i i need to be able to do something with it I, it needs to be used to heal or to see into the future or to like it's great having lucid dreams but if you're not given information to do something for humanity it doesn't seem or to calm yourself so you can do something for humanity doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. Right? Like well, I don't, you know. I mean, I, I think from what I get, the Merkaba is the light body. And it's, it's if you can actually, uh, I've had someone stand on the time translator, see a Merkaba around them and have some sort of out of this world experience. And she was, again, very vivid with her visualizations. Mm. And I think it's, uh, I think only good will come from it. <laughs> I'm always a little skeptical when I wake up in anxiety the next morning. I'm like, okay. Oh. Why? Like, so then I, the correlation is like, okay, is it because that was bad or is it because there's other energies know you're using it? So they're trying to make it bad so that you don't use it again. Like I, I, that's where I go in my mind because of my, my experience. Aha. This guy. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sweet. He's sweet. So. I, and that's where I get confused. And then also it's, you know, there's just lots of shit going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. How, how are you doing in terms of getting work done or? Um... Well, I, I had my, I had my, it was terrible because I had my gathering on Saturday hmm. and I, I spent the, I was so excited for a whole month. Like I was planning a crab claw party and, you know, I was going to have my, just my bestie friends there. And I got, two big long tables and made like a seating for 10 and bought tablecloths and like went to town. And then I, I'm having a great time. I start drinking about 1230. I have a couple and I get a little bit hammered too quickly because I haven't eaten breakfast. That, that's all. I know that, but you know, I'm having fun and I'm getting the table ready and you know, I'm not drinking too much, but I'm drinking, but not, it didn't seem like crazy. I have my crab. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden I hit the wall, Elijah. I, I literally snapped. And I have to, I went upstairs and I had to lay down and I lay, I was out for a day. I couldn't, I couldn't move off my bed. Everybody was partying down here without me. And I had this sense of horror because I'd spent all this money and time getting ready for a party. And here I was, I wasn't able to move off my bed. I was so nauseous. I was so sick. And I hadn't been like, it was weird. I couldn't even, I could hear them all laughing downstairs and doing my dishes. And, and I, I think I laid on the couch until 11 that night and I was still sick the next day. Wow. And it was just weird because it just like it hit me and we just like it wasn't like it was terrible like what a, a terrible experience oh. get that ready and get that prepared and have all your friends come over and then i couldn't even enjoy the party it was bad and then poor sarah like she's like are you okay mom i'm like yeah i think i had some food poisoning or something sarah i said i'll be better later sorry and she's down here talking to all my friends you know it's weird sad experience huh. Do you think it was food poisoning or? I, I think so. I think it was a little bit of everything, a little bit of stuff going on with life and then drinking and not having breakfast. And then I ate some of this weird crab. There was, I thought it was crab legs, but it wasn't. I think it was somebody said it was crab pollock and it was really it didn't taste very good. And I think I'm the only one that ate it. I don't know. Cause it was at the very end. Mm. And so I know I was really drunk and then I had this crab pollock and I played croquet for a bit. And then all of a sudden I just hit the wall. So I don't know what happened. It was, it was really disappointing. Mm. But, whatever. 
am I going to do both? <laughs> and then I finally recover on Monday and I'm looking at my bank account. I'm like, you have no money left. What the fuck are you going to do? You dumbass. Like you're just going to spend $400 on a party because that you can't go to because <laughs> all your friends and like, I just like parties. I like having people over. I like planning stuff. I, but did I need to do that? No. Did I want to do it? Yeah, it was fun. But... <laughs> That's the problem when the cash flow is low. <laughs> you get oh, you got 100 you left. You know, you're thinking, okay, this could be food for two weeks, or I can blow it on this party, but <laughs> I'll get it. It'll come in. Yeah. It'll come it doesn't in. even register in my head. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got a thousand bucks in there. Next thing you know, it's like, I have $200. Oh, but I have a bill coming out that's 180 Okay, it's 20 bucks for groceries. <laughs> okay, how the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> right? And then it's like, you didn't, why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. I could, I just have to maybe admit that I'm really shitty with money and that when I get it, I have to like take it out and give it to somebody. Like, am I that, am I a five-year-old? Like, here, sir, here's $2,000. Please hide this until May 1st when the alarm goes off and then give it to me. I don't care what I say, just hide it. And then I'll, I'll get it for me. Like, I think the, one of the main problems of getting older is the the things you thought you would have got better at, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and you're actually, and you're seeing now that it probably is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Like when you're young, you have that idea that you can always get better and things can get yeah. better and you it stays with you. So it's a good attitude, right? But I think as you get older and the, and the residue builds and the breakdowns yeah. Yeah. and the, all the things that have gone wrong, it's, it's hard to maintain that confidence that, well, no, now I'll get it because now we're running out of energy. Now <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easy when you have lots of money. You can just spend what you normally need to spend and you can always have a forced savings. That's what I did before. I saved a bunch of money and now it's like, I knew that I only had so much money. I'm like, you should take some money out and put it somewhere. And I didn't. And I, I knew that I should have, but I kept thinking, oh, that's okay. No, I'll, $20 here, $50 here, $70 here, 20 like it. I looked at all this stuff I spent my money on. I'm like, okay when are you gonna what why because you just like living month to month and not having money for food like what's your fucking problem like and then and i started panic on monday like i haven't i haven't got an anxiety attack like that in years in probably three years and i literally flipped jigged out on monday i was like what the fuck i'm not going down there man <laughs> like that's just bad news I always feel better at night. It's the mornings. It's like a consciousness of, uh oh, what are you doing? Like, are you wait? You know, when you're waking up to work, what are you doing? Like, oh, I got to drive my daughter to school, and then I've got to find a job. Like, it's like that. That night, I'm fine. It's like, okay, five o'clock, fucking work's done. Can't really do anything. Can't look for jobs. I get my daughter. Okay, I'm off. I can have a beer. I'm good. Watch some TV. Just and then I calm down. Yeah. At three in the morning. Uh oh, it's almost six o'clock. People are up. I hear traffic. Yeah, people are probably driving to work soon. Like, I guess one of those. Mm. But that's life. It's just being a human being. So I, I want to get back to meditating or something to calm my brain down and kick ass on consciousness because what am I? I have everything right now. I got gas in my car. I got food in my fridge today. So what am I worried about? Like, why animals don't go? Oh, is it gonna? Is the sun gonna shine tomorrow? Like, what if the sun doesn't shine? I'm gonna find those seeds, and then, and then what do I do? And then, and then what are the guys that come calling on me again? And then, well, what, where's my nest? Do I gotta build a nest next month. Well, I mean, do I have the resources? Is it gonna rain on? Like, like nature's not doing that. Well, I saw a show with tigers. Only ten percent of their hunting is successful. Oh. But ninety percent of the time they go out, they oh. don't get nothing. That's a good meme. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> One, you want one in 20 or one, whatever, like tigers are 10%. Go fucking do what they do and try to get laid. Whatever. Can't even find her. She's on the opposite side of the jungle. Like you smell your way to her ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's just, so, I just feel like there's a lot going on, like the lockdowns and the party and not feeling well and drinking and money and they're teaching puberty at school. And I'm like, what the fuck is that all about? And no. Like if you don't calm your own mind down, what are you gonna do? Oh, it's a lot of problems. They're building next door, man. They're like renovating that place next door. I'm like, I hope I'm not gonna hear you fuckers when somebody moves in. Like 
I haven't heard the lady there for six years. She was a quiet, older lady. Never heard her. Ever. And now she's moved out or died? There's somebody renovating the place. And it's like, bang, 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 bang. I'm like, what the fuck? I better just turn my tunes up so you know that I'm here. <laughs> but How close? Are they? They're right beside you, I guess, right? Yeah, right, right beside me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what are you going to do? Right? Like, this is life. <laughs> and I, um, that's got his young guy's coming over tonight. He's looking at a, one of my rooms to rent. Okay. Which will be helpful. But I, again, I have to give up. Like, I have to give up a lot to have somebody live in my personal space. Like, if I'm working and coming home, but then I've got some young guy that's doing what? Like, hanging out in his room or he's, is he working at night? Is he studying? Like, what's he, you know, are we hanging out together? Are we like, Hey, what program do you want? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, that's a big deal. But the reality is I, I I can't, this house is so expensive that I'm, it's killing me. Yeah. So it's, I told Sarah, it's just temporary. If we just say it as an eight month goal to help us through this time, then it's better than losing the house. Isn't it? If it's a little bit of more help, is it better than losing the house than I got, I don't know, like your sanity, your comfort zone, being able to walk nude to not hear somebody snoring or not hear somebody shout. Like, I don't know. got two girls and I got, I don't know. I'm just going to trust when he shows up, I'll go, yep. Or I'll go, no, I have to give an answer. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's a big step, but I think it's good. I think it'll keep you on your toes. Well, it's kind of, you have to adapt again, right? It's not forever. My mom would say it's just for now. Yeah. And, you know, it might be, might be nice. Maybe he's super handy or maybe he's like super fun and just easy going and Sarah likes him. Maybe he likes to fix shit. I don't know. Like maybe he's, I don't know. Who knows? Mm. Yeah. (laughs) You're getting older. Like I'm not 20 anymore. Like I'm 50. I, I, I need some, some fucking privacy. (laughs) <laughs> like Sarah listens to half my conversations. Like, what's this guy going to be doing? <laughs> and who knows what they're really like, you know, like maybe it's got a girlfriend, maybe they're fucking all they want to fuck or something. And I have to say like, you can't make out in my house. Cause I have a 10 year old daughter. Like these are the rules. Like, what do you, I don't know. Like, <laughs> that's why I wish I, if I could meditate more and just be like really present and really like in my body and go yes or no, not, well, I'm not sure. Right. When was the last time you lived with somebody that you didn't know? Forever. Like I haven't. Forever. Like 30 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've always been on my own, like lived on my own in small little places or live with my sister or something like that. And it's not fun living with other people because you're always quiet and walking around. It doesn't feel like quite your space. And But I got chickadees here I can watch. I put a little bird bath in my back yard and I like it. They come and try to take a little bath. I like it. And it's my post. I posted on my Facebook story. This Robin got right in that bowl and just. And I was like, yeah. Sweet. What else is going on? What are you working on? Oh, um, this week, I'm hoping that uh, Noah is going to finish the seven step chat room and then I can start testing it with LaCiel. Um, the Yorkton group is doing well. I'm coaching for ladies, uh, one-on-one coaching from Yorkton that are want to build a shared knowledge community and they're uh, very excited and they've got it the first team of four people using the system all right um, and they fit perfectly into the parts like it's the first time that four people here i'll get the map that four people are actually utilizing the main founding map so i've had this woman for 10 years but she didn't um let me get this for you got so many things in here now excuse me (laughs) 
<laughs> so what's special about the Merkaba? Like, is it just the, the geomancy or the geo, like, what is it? What is it about the triangle or about this tetrahedron? Like, well, what is it? It's the base of all life or it makes the Merkaba and then it makes the cow, you know, makes the flower of life or like, what's the thing? Yeah. This guy's the master. Um, Merkaba. The human being is surrounded by numerous geometric fields of energy that are electromagnetic in nature within this dimension. The Merkaba extends into all possible dimensions and each dimension uses the laws of that dimension to manifest. In the figure above, you are seeing only one of hundreds of other possibilities that exist around the body. You are looking at the star tetrahedral field that is the first geometric field of the surface of the body and sometimes referred to as the opening to the Merkaba. This field will be the one we will use, or at least most of us here on Earth at this time in history, but we're going to show you the more complete geometric light body, because for some of you, this is information will become more very important. For the vast majority of you, this, the first star tetrahedral field is all that is necessary to know. Once you reach the next world, the fourth dimension of this planet, you will receive all the additional information you will need at that time. Why do I keep giving information that is only for a few? I'm speaking to an audience that is on many levels of evolution. All of you are important to life. In fact, if even one spirit were to become non-existent, the entire universe would cease to exist. In order to reach the whole audience, I must go beyond what most people need. The star tetrahedron, source of all geometric fields around the body. If you were to follow these energy lines of this star tetrahedral field to their source within the body, you'd be looking at the tiny star tetrahedral field of the original eight cells, the egg of life, located in the exact geometric center of the body. As you saw in chapter seven, the creation of life is geometric. Mitosis moves through sphere to tetrahedron, to star tetrahedron, to cube, to sphere gain, and finally to torus. This geometric beginning of life does not stop there. It continues out to a distance of about 55 feet around the body creating an amazingly intricate array of interconnected and interrelated geometric energy bodies that will be used over time by life as it evolves. Do you want me to keep going or is that? Yeah, cool, that's interesting. Can you send me that? I just trying to want to, I like understanding the science of why I'm using it. I want to just, I can, I can see really well. It's just, I don't want to know why I'm expanding it or not expanding it. Okay, there's a special breath that goes with it. Um, Anyway, yeah. Um, Who's this guy? This guy is John, John Bello Melchizedek. Oh, okay. His books are called The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. Okay. Very, book one and two. And cool. contains most, in, like most of the information around the Merkaba that I know is from there. Okay. Well, it's just, yeah. I just want to get to the truth. Like I've been thinking about what am I doing all this work for? And, and the whole point is like, I want to get to my own truth of, of whatever works for me. And if it's meditation, then it's meditation. If it's dancing, it's dancing. If it's writing, it's right. I just want to find my own, like, why am I here? What am I doing? How, how do I relate my gifts? Everybody's struggling. I get that. Everybody's doing their thing. But obviously I'm going to, I'm seeing the world a little bit different. So why? Like, so what am I, how come you don't know that by now? Well, I know that I'm here to create and write and teach. Those are my, I've, I nailed them down to what they were. Okay. But since I've been watching Dr. Stephen Greer's work on the UFOs and what they, you know, what the government's doing or not doing, like, I don't know, like, what's true and what's not true. Um, we need to expand our consciousness, yes, to connect with other life forms. Okay, but why? Because it's so easy, um, because we can, because he's got the, the golden thing. He knows how to do it because we'll get information and he can't tell us that. Otherwise he wouldn't be truthful. Like, I don't, what's the point? What's the point of contacting UFOs or ETs for what? Unless they're gonna give you information to, for you to help yourself to help the species or I, I'm, I'm just trying to make sense of like, why are we doing what we're doing? Cause I wanna play a bigger game than, you know just pay my mortgage and raise a daughter. I wanna make a difference in the world, but how do I do that? 
you know, if I'm always in stress mode or I'm always like trying to, you know, what's the truth of it all? Right. Like literally like having an anxiety attack in the morning and I'm doing his breath work and I'm like, Lisa, you have to master this. You have to find a way. It's the only control you have. Otherwise you're in your mind is caught. You know, your mind is causing your anxiety. You're not no reason. Nobody's attacking you. There's no reason to be anxious, but the future, the thought of the future, which is a reminder of the past, which isn't, hasn't even happened yet is what's causing the anxiety. It's just thinking like, Oh, things are always going to be the same. I know this pattern. Yeah. It does. It feels like shitty. Oh my gosh. What's going to happen. And that's just my, that's built into my nervous system because you know, you're always like waiting for shit to happen. You think things are going to be better. And then you get older, like, Oh no, same shit. Like still doing the same shit relationships, still not working out. Oops. Still don't have money. Oh, still spending money. Oh, okay. All right. Like it's the same shit. Mm. So I'm just trying to find like a bigger truth underneath this one is, you know, yeah, this is true, but, but then what? What's your vision? Well, I had a, my vision was different before I was going to finish my book and I wanted to go and talk about my experiences, but they're, they're still not like, Hey, I've got this method or I got this thing. And they're just experiences. They're like your experiences and all the things you've gone through and the healing parts you've gone through. They're just different. And mine are more about maybe relationships or how to communicate with each other, but I don't know what's, I'm, but why? It's not like I've mastered anything. I've just been curious about lots of things. Well, you know, not like I have one, you've been working on your maps for like 20 plus years. I've been working on studying things about the body and spirituality, but, but what? But I, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess for myself, I find I'm in a different situation because I've got two major projects now where I'm working with people who are directly working with me and right. want to learn what I have kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So I think there are distinctions, right, in terms of the visionary and how close you are to manifesting what you want to manifest. And at some point, I think you either need a team or you need like clients that are consistently right coming to you going, you know, so you're always at like part of the times you got way too much time on your hand, right? I mean, if you had six, eight hours a day, you're working. Yeah you don't have that time to think about how fucked I am because no. <laughs> you're not fucked anymore. Right. I mean, the, the main thing is having enough work to maintain, maintain your lifestyle and, yeah. and you're, yeah. and you, you've been caught in this dilemma for a long time where, and it's a dilemma I face and dilemma, which I think a lot of people face where they don't have enough coming in on their own. And if they go to a job, they don't like it. And it's, it's harsh to be in that old paradigm kind of thing. So how do you, you know, the real intensity of desire to go get that job isn't really there because deep down you don't want to do it. Yeah, I know. It's, I'm like, I, I know I'm like, okay, what the fuck job I'm going to get? Well, I'm just getting a job. And, but it's, you know, and, and everybody's think, got their opinions, but they're not really based in the truth. They're just based in their truth, based on their experience. Because I had to come up with a salary and a base and a commission. And I was, I asked six different people. I got six different answers and I'm like, okay, I have to, I got to find a way to tap in and like, okay, what, what's the truth. And I have to kind of go with, well, what feels good. I don't want to miss the opportunity because I'm not messing around anymore. I just need a fucking job. Like, let's go. Like, I don't, if it's for six months, great. Let my panic stop and let me just get fucking working and being creative again. I'm good. Let's go. You, okay. I'm not like, well, you know, I mean, I think maybe you should uh, mimic a few of the things that I'm doing. Um, yeah. I mean, one of the things I, I just did in the last little while was I went through Facebook and I asked all the people who I think are solid for their emails. So to me, Facebook's a big waste of time in a sense. Let's say you got 800 people, right. you want clients, you yeah. want people who you're working with. Like I want to move from flake to solid. Okay. I don't think that's it anymore. I keep thinking, Elijah, that I should be a consultant. Like I should go and teach people and I should do that. But I'm finding that what the universe is, the feedback back, regardless of the subconscious, like feedback shit, I'm talking about where I shine, like where I do my best work. It's not, it's not so much like I taught the constellations and it was great, but nobody really wanted to pay me for it. Nobody was like, Lisa, this was amazing. It changed my life. Feng Shui, I get more better response because people are like, oh, that totally made a difference to my system and I believe in it. And people will do it from that perspective. I could do that all day long. I could do a movie on that. That'd be fun. But 
then I got to build something on my own where I do the best is where somebody already has resources. I've already built something and I just go in there and make it better. Right. Like I make shit happen. I make move shit, make shit happen. Do just like do whatever I have to use, whatever tools I have. And that's what happens for me. But you know, okay. So then I have to go back to my, okay, so what do you really want to do? If you really do want to like write a book and go and talk about it, that doesn't feel congruent anymore because my experience has been like, well, it took you a long time to write the fucking book. And two, you haven't edited it yet. And three, you never saved any money to get it edited properly. You spent all your money. So hmm, have you been working on it lately? No, not really interested. Because in my mindset, it's like, it's never going to happen. Or I'm never going to make any money off of it. Right. Constellations did it four times. Awesome. But not interested. I'll keep doing it for myself. I'm just back to working with people to make a difference inside of an organization. That's the only thing I'm left with. So you also said you wanted to sell new homes? As yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Because the thing is, I think you know, you're coming off a very big success. You're coming off doing a very difficult job and turning it around and using your feng shui, using everything you had, and it worked. And it worked in a, in a way that went beyond yours and their expectations. So yeah. that, that to me is when you're coming in to present yourself somewhere, it's much easier to market a success, right? Your last thing was a success. So, you know, you don't want to talk about all the other things. You want to come in confident about what you can do. Yeah. And then you have to talk to the right person, right? I mean, yeah. kind of obvious, yeah. but to me, it, it's like the... Again, like because COVID's fucked so so many things up socially, right? It's just it's cre yeah. created the field that, that you got to do something kind of unique or come up with a creative way to get their attention. And I again, I sort of suggested you know start driving around where all the new homes are being built, right? Yeah. Again, when I was painting, every time I got a contract, it was because I walked around and found the person who's a decision maker on the job site, said hello, and. Uh, all of a sudden I get a contract, right? I mean, that's just how, how that type of what work works. But I think people who have, it's, it's a lot different coming in from the corporate side to the big office to try to get some work versus somebody who's, fuck, this is fucked. I need some fucking help. Where is somebody? And you go, hey. Yeah, yeah. Here I am, but that doesn't seem to <laughs> delight you in any way. <laughs> well, people say that to me all the time. Is just go out to new homes and just go, you know, Hey, you guys need somebody? Hey, you guys need somebody? But I, that does not interest me. Like, I don't go, yeah, that's that's a good idea. I should fucking just get in my car and drive, you know. I mean, what I did do is I actually called some people this time. I called and left a message. I got one guy. I saw his truck as I was dropping Sarah off. And I thought, okay, that's a sign. They, it said, you know, Waterford Homes. I'm thinking, I'm just going to call them randomly. Hey, do you need somebody? Like, and the guy actually talked to me for, you know, five minutes and he, he laughed. He says, no, Lisa, we don't, we don't need new business development people. He goes, we just hang our sign up and people find us. Like people come and ask us, like we're, we've been doing this for 20 years. And I said, well, what about, what about this idea of being like a, a gopher of all your job sites? And I come in I bring guys coffee. I go get them screws and nails if they need it. I clean up the work site at the end of the day. I make things presentable or, you know, what about that? He goes, no, no, all our guys are accountable. They're, they clean up after themselves. They don't need coffee. They're super busy. Um, we keep a really tight ship, tight, a tight ship. Maybe other people might. And I'm like, it was a good idea. It just doesn't work for our model. And I'm like, oh, finally, a fucking guy that knows what he's fucking doing. Like, <laughs> And I said, well, I'm going to follow you on Instagram. You sound like a really neat business owner. He goes, yeah, no problem. So I just made sure I said, hey, thanks. Nice talking to you. And he responded back. He goes, yeah, it was nice talking to you too. Thanks. Okay, good. That felt like I made... Like, okay, that felt good. So it's just doing that. So how many call how many calls did you make? Well, I only made five calls. I only got one guy out of the five calls, but still. That's pretty good. Twenty percent. I mean, I think most people are like three to five percent on shit like that. Yeah, well. You're lucky if you talk to someone at twenty calls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah, for sure. Well, that's what I mean. It's then I start to feel a little bit desperate, like, hey, hi, I'm Lisa. Do you need any new moves? It's like yeah. It's so offensive. I find that shit offensive. Mm. Like you walk into a new home sales, there's not the decision makers not there. The actual person you want their job from is there. Right. Hey, you guys need any help? Uh, what for? Like, what are you, who are you? Like, it's to me that doesn't. I don't know. Doesn't go. 
I mean, I could follow like Shane Holmes is on LinkedIn. He posts all the time and I could be like, Shane, I could keep posting on his recommending or comment on his stuff until I get enough rapport. He's used to me that I finally say, Shane, I really love selling homes and I, I've been following your posts for months now. You're awesome. Can we chat? Like I could probably get away with doing something like that, but I have to put some time into it. You have to invest a little like, in, you know, investigating instead of just show up. Hi, give me a job. Like I used to do 30 years ago, right? Just show up. Sure. Okay. You're around. So. Yeah. I got you. But I, I know what you mean. Like that's the only way to do it now. Like I've applied for four years online. I have not got one lead by online. Like following those, you know, the search engines and applying for jobs online. Not one, no. not one person has called me back unless it was for some shitty telemarketing sales, you know? So I know it's, it's just a game. They're just throwing shit out there anyways. They've already got their own people or, you know, they've got 20,000 people you know, applying and somebody's running through a computer program going wrong word, wrong word, right word, wrong word. Okay. This person, because if they actually knew me or looked at my resume, it's not that bad that I shouldn't be able to get a job. Oh. oh yeah this i remember this okay so how can lisa attract some work to her in the present moment joy sharing block value is joy yeah sharing lens. something in the way of a path that stops the flow from occurring flow lens so something blocking me is that the idea and if i'm just enjoying i'm just sharing what's oh, the block Oh, you're seeing that? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's a... <laughs> what? What's the best remedy for the Visionary Hub team? Focus on this week. There you go. Can you yeah. see that? Value, yeah. How can they say attract some work? Value being in a state of equilibrium. Exploration to look into a question or field and discuss it freely without any restraints. And learning, you can't read that. A subsystem that empowers a system's members to reach their highest potential in the jobs they are responsible for. So what does that what does that mean? Because it's like, how do I track some work? So I gotta stay in balance. Like I could make these into anything. Yeah, so I gotta you wanna stay make in something balance. that works. Sorry? You wanna make something into something that makes sense to you that you can yeah. adjust your methodology. So exploration, right? I mean, that's of all the convo types. That's the one that's the freest. That's the one where there's there's no rights and wrongs. You're just exploring, right? It's not, you're just yeah. like an explorer. Uh, so balance would be, you know, obviously balancing your time, you know, when you're exploring, when you're not. And lens is learning, which obviously means that you got to do something, you got to learn something new. Uh, I think we all have to learn something new right now. Well, I, I made that decision to balance my life. I, I planned everything today and I put in time to shower and get ready. I put in time to dance or work out, but dance and work out play time didn't work. I did do my walk and, um, but I got caught in these questions that this lady asked me. And so some of it got two of the things I put on my schedule didn't get done. And then, um, yeah, exploration is. Well, did, did you know exploring? I mean, it's, um, when I thought about you going out to the new homes, it was more sort of going on a walkabout yeah. and getting out of the house and just, and like the explorer, what do you explore goes out? Like there is an intent, but it's yeah. kind of, it, it's open. And it's kind of like the, you know, our, I think sometimes when our intuition will actually lead us. Like well, that's why I called that guy when I saw the truck. I was stopped by this. I was getting mad because I drive really fast. And this fucker was being so slow. And I'm like, fucking move. And I'm like, no, no, I know. I know this game. Just slow down because the universe wants you to slow down. And just as he was turning right and stopping, I'm waiting for him, giving the you know, eyeball roll. I look left and there's another truck that I wouldn't have seen before. And he was at an angle that I saw the logo on his truck, which said um, Waterford. I thought I'm gonna. That's a sign. That has to be a sign. I'm gonna call, and that's the only reason why I called him. 
was be, those are the, I get that, Elijah, I get that flow. That's where I want to get to. I want to get into that matrix flow where I'm like, I see something. I just go, what does that mean? Oh, it means phone them. Okay. Phone that person. Yeah. Just, and then let it go. Like, don't be attached to anything happening, but just know that it's asking you to do something, I guess. Right. No, I, I agree. And I think that that's, there's that constant state, right? Between the flow versus the fear or the flow versus the, you know, it's so much easier to sort of be in the flow when things are going your way and you got the money in your pocket and you don't have the bills coming up. <laughs> well, I'm not, not really. Cause I was I rethought about what my, my old boss said about why they were offended in that meeting with me. The first meeting was great. I was just me and this one guy, one-on-one -on -one, chatted. I was even dressed in a dress. Like it was a different kind of meeting, but the second meeting I was, the energy was different. I was a little more aggressive. I was wearing actually a camo shirt right. and green pants. And then the feng shui, yeah, it was a little bit offside because I told them a story about when I saw her and what the sign meant. And they probably thought she's fucking out to lunch. These are, these are professional clients. We're sophisticated men. We want, we want a sophisticated woman in here. Who's this weirdo? And so then all of a sudden it all made sense to me was that, yeah, I was speaking how Lisa speaks, but they were right. I didn't, I didn't tone it back because I didn't know them. I just, bleh. but I do that anyways. I mean, I, I don't not be appropriate. I, I let shit fly all the time. That's why I did well at the Irvine is because people like that. I was honest and open with them. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing, but you know, now I see their posts on Instagram, like, fuck, they've started their sales process, blah, blah, blah. I could have had a three-year job, Elijah. And I'm like, I have to, Sarah goes, Oh mom, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I'm like, I hate that saying. I hate that it just let, but again, if I would have listened more, or sort of looked for signs versus like, just be out there like splat, like that, if I would have been in my body going, okay, what's, what's my intuition tell me I need to do or ask, but I was so into me, like, I was like, whatever, I'm super successful right now. And I'm going to get this job and Hey, how are you guys doing? And I was uncomfortable, but I wasn't picking up my body. So I wasn't like zoned in. Mm. So, you know, and it's like John used to say, D Martini would say, you know, whenever you're arrogant, you always get a fall. Like the universe just has to balance that equation. You can't be fucking out there doing whatever you want, spouting off. I'm so good. He sucks. And I see that time and time again, whenever I get cocky, I always get whammied really hard. Whenever I get too full of myself, I fucking get pommeled down hard, yeah. like hard. And it's like, I haven't learned that the empathy and the, just the love yet, or just being, you know, everything's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I've done good. Thank you. Or like, I haven't learned that obviously. Like, to be humble and to have empathy for people that they're might not be as quick as me, or they might not see the world that way they see, or they, they might not be action oriented. They may have 10 things to do, not two. Like I haven't learned that. I just it happens to me over and over as a pattern. Mm. And go in, I do a great job and I fucking crater every time. I fucking wreck it, smash it at the end. I'm done. Like <laughs> every, almost every job. Awesome. Awesome. It's like part of me that wants it to crash so I can keep creating. Maybe it's a creation strategy. Fucking create, crash, create, crash. I don't know. Well, and it may be seasonal, right? It's more, you know, you're good for three months, but you, then you got to move on to something else. I mean, it's... Yeah. It's more of an artist way, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would say, yeah, I would say like never take more than a three month contract and do it in, do it in bits and then you can renew or not, but then you're not kind of like, you won't crash it because you know, you're getting out. Well, I knew I was getting out of the Irvine in four months. I fucking crashed it. <laughs> I fucking crashed it in the first couple of weeks and like, you know, started building up the crashing mode until. That's. Know. That's funny because I, I keep forgetting that within you, there's not a, a positive thing about that experience. But from my point of view, who didn't participate, just heard the outside, I can say, hey, that went great. <laughs> well, I think I think it went great as far as what I learned and what I accomplished. Yeah. But where I fell down was I didn't have any empathy for, for this the property manager at all. 
All I saw was his incongruencies, where he wasn't being his truth, where he was fucking up, where he couldn't own his shit. Like, all I saw was like, are you fucking kidding me? Have you not had anybody smack you over the head yet, asshole? Oh, I'm a woman. Oh, I can't smack you over the head. That's right. But fucking, you're fucking lying right to my fucking face, you fucking loser. Like, I get so mad. <laughs> I would be like, burningly mad. And then I really look back, I, I could say, so what, Lisa? So he... He said he'd do something and he didn't do it. So he's wondering why he's heard about this stuff. Like he's probably is some truth to him. I mean, maybe he's unconscious. And so he can't recall or he doesn't, he really, maybe he really doesn't know. Like, and I, I, it was I funny. Think it's it's, awesome. Isn't it registering, I guess, capacity? It's like for me, you know, it's, you know, kind of like, like within every context, there's a certain capacity. For what? What do you mean? Well, I'm gonna move my spot here. Ugh. Like it's like let's say those those guys that you had the second meeting with and it didn't go well. Yeah. When the first meeting went well, you had reported the one person. As soon as you got to the team, and, uh, you're all dark. I know. Hold on. There. I was sitting funny. My back. Okay. So everyone that you meet has a certain capacity for how much Lisa they can take. That's right, it's true. Right? So you have to register your impact. You have to register how much am I giving and how much can they receive? And you're, you're, the, the one air that seems to keep coming over is that you go beyond the capacity. Oh, every time. <laughs> so in the moment, John. It, it could be in the moment or it could be like in a lunar cycle, it could be in a seasonal cycle. You're, you're filling them with energy. You're filling them with Lisa energy. It could be positive or negative, but at some point you go into the negative side. I agree. And so I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, what is the inherent capacity of that person? And that, again, it's kind of like I had this uh, metaphor of rowboats and battleships. Have I used that one with you before? Or like there's a harbor mm -hmm. and there's let's say 30 women in the harbor and 28 of them are rowboats and two of them are battleships. But like the, the ugly duckling, the ugly duckling thinks they're the same as the duck. The swan thinks they're a duck. So everyone in the harbor thinks they're just a ship, right? But actually 28 of them are rowboats and two are battleships. So two women are like massively more powerful than the other 28. The 28 are just kind of like, they go along with life. They, they're just like normal people in a sense, muggles as they're called, right? But I mean, for people who to me are taking a conscious effort on their path for over 20 years, they've built up a resiliency, you've built up a strength, you've built up awareness, you build up, you know, you build up your own capacity. Yeah. And, but you don't have a real reference point for how much work you've done because you're always criticizing yourself. Yeah. So you don't know, I've, I've reached level five, you have no barometer and everyone's at level one and you're just like, fuck man, like, would you fucking just keep up? And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know where you are, right? Yeah. And so to me, like most, if you got a man who's a, a manager of a building and he's gonna be the manager of a building for the rest of his life and he's, he's actually found his niche and he knows if he just takes care of these guys, he makes his 50K or whatever, he eats his pizza, you know, looks at the women's breasts in 7C every day. And then that's his life, right? He comes home, watches TV and there's nothing else. And his capacity is just the apartment, what I want and, you know, sexual perversions. Yeah. yeah. Not to be mean to him, but just kind of like, and you are like, go into the realm of, <laughs> The kind of like, oh, she's a pretty lady. And so he's got his his kind of methodology that's off, like yeah. most men. And so he's rude and he's ignorant and he's still doing his job. And you got to work with this guy. And some side of you goes, I don't want to fucking work with this idiot, but you have to. So you're not in a position where you really have to, let's say, work with idiots a lot for long because you're either going to get rid of them or they're going to get rid of you. But all of a sudden you got this job. Now you got to do with this idiot and you're you're peaking right you're, you're you're like fucking you know wonder woman energetically and you got your shit and you you don't realize you got thunderbolts and lightning bolt <laughs> and, and you got your death stare and you got your all these things and this guy's just like fuck so he's gonna resist and he's just gonna get in your way 
make it hard for you because he's he doesn't like feeling how he feels around you so he's going to chop you down right like the other 110 men that did the same thing good that's a good analogy good uh, john i finally heard that for the first a similar story from john wyland about six months ago he said women your nervous system is wired differently than men you always want more they want less you can handle more more love more intimacy more chocolate more more lights more stuff more dancing more more it's always get yeah take it all along. he says there's more but men can't and it's up to you to register their nervous system how much can they take because they can't take your full-on whatever you got they're like oh my fuck here she comes like and they're like i'm watching the game don't talk to me right and she's coming through and they can just tell that she's fucking gonna blow a hole through them and i was like I never thought of it that way that men couldn't handle in their nervous system this more that the, that the feminine energy is like more, more, like, you know, like, like it's more, you know, and I remember even Darren saying to me sometimes when we were making love, he'd be like, I don't know where I get this energy from. It's like, you always want more. It's like, I don't know, where does this come from? It's like, it's like this, I don't know. And I was, I was like, looking at him, like, what's he talking about? <laughs> What do you mean more like but i i get it more now and now that you've explained it that way I, how do i learn that though i was like how do i be like okay they can only take so much of me so how when and where do i want to dance today is that what i'm asking myself i think it's like being inside one of those games where you get the balls and they go around and they're going around and you're a ball but you're you got movement and they're like, there's the big rebounder, there's the little rebounder, there's the big clown. It's gonna kick your ass. And, and you, I guess like it's it's like subtle navigational skills in terms of constantly checking yourself when you're in an important meeting to you know bring in that observer a lot carefully. Like like what you just went through, you should never go through again. You no, should never, no. you should ne you should never make that mistake again. No, I forget to. I forget to, I do it with my lovers, but I don't do it when I'm with just people. If I'm one-on-one, -on -one, I'm better, but you put me in any more than one, I don't do well. It's like I click off because I can't just be one-on-one. -on -one. And if I would have like felt into that guy's heart and breathed with him and went, where's he's at? What am I getting? I would have said, tell me about the frustrations or problems you've had. And what, like, I could have, I could have, like you said, asked questions. But I didn't, I was uncomfortable because they weren't asking any questions. And I was like, okay, what am I fucking gonna talk about? I guess, well, oh yeah, I went to the site today and this is what happened. Like, and they're all like, what the fuck, you know? And I, I was offended at first, but then I kept replaying it and going, oh, I, I get what I did now. I, I get it, right? I, they don't know me though. That's the tragedy of it though, Elijah. They don't know who I am and what I could do for them. That's, that's the sad part about it. Did I misbehave or did I miscalculate something? Yes, but that's too bad because they really don't know I could be a great gift to them. So, did you ever phone the guy like no. I suggested? No. Why not? I don't know. I just, I think I just got kind of gun shy or whatever you call that when I just sort of like, okay, well, it didn't go well. They didn't, I should have called him like four weeks ago, not now. Well, by the way, I got some feedback on the meeting. Um, I would have liked to hear it from you. And, you know, if you want to give me some more feedback, that's great. But I, Apologize, I didn't show up the way that I normally show up in meetings, and I would have loved to have done a great job for you, but just letting you know, like I could say something like that. And and clarify, really find out. I think I think it's a sign of a, a real professional who, let's say, fails at something, and then goes, "Okay, I'm going to figure it out," and goes to the people where they fail to go, "Okay, well, just you know, tell me what happened." Yeah, that's how I learn. And to me from their point of view, to me, you'd have a lot more respect for that person and you'd have more respect that, wow, this person, you know, is it, there's more to, there's a next level, right? Then you have another chance. Yeah. They, they can just blow you away or they can go, wow, well, you know, we, you never know, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's true. You don't, you don't know. And maybe they haven't found somebody or maybe they go back and ask or you don't know. You're right. You don't, you don't know. And because, but I think I'm calmed down enough and I'm humble enough to say, I would just, just tell me what went wrong. Cause I want to move forward. I want to, I want to be in new home sales. And I just, just tell me, just give me some good advice and I'll, I'll be happy to learn and, and I'll take it with me. Yeah. 
because I mean, they may know somebody, you know, yeah. they, and maybe, and what that does to me is it shows initiative. I mean, if you're going into sales, you want someone who, who can take rejection. You want someone who comes back again. You want someone who's a, a learner. Yeah. And maybe if you come back and you go, you know, it didn't go well, but do you know anyone else who's in the business? Cause you guys kind of hang out together. Um, shows persistence and that's essentially, you know, what they need yeah. that, right? Yeah. All right. I'll phone them. I'll phone them tomorrow. Huh? Tomorrow morning. And, and if I don't get them, I'll get his voicemail to say, you know, I get it. I, whatever. I'll say what I need to do for my heart, like authentically. And if you want to give me any feedback, call me back. If not, then we'll get Again, I'm, I'm always attached to my suggestions. I figure right. that, well, I figure that's what I'm supposed to do, give feedback and, and give ideas that can sort of help people get to where they want to go. And so if they don't actually do them. But the, there's a question missing then, which is why didn't you do it? Like, why is it so scary to phone somebody back? Hmm. And versus they're saying, you know, what if the universe was waiting for you to do something and they're going to remember that call and they're going to, they are going to call you back in two weeks and say, you know, at least I do know somebody. Or, hey, you know what, we, this fell through. Why don't you come back in while we'll I'm talk? So it's, I need to be motivated of why I want to do it. Because what happens is I shut down, Elijah, and I give up. Like, I, I'm done. I'm fucking done with that meeting. That fucking didn't go well. I'm fucking out. Not, okay, when I phone the back, you never know what the universe has in store for me. Like, right? But, I got it. Um, so you can, you can make, people make suggestions to me all the time, but why should I take everybody's suggestion? I still have to nap, self-navigate of, I want to do that. I don't. Well, why didn't you do that without there being judgment on, you know, my girlfriend, like, well, at least you should get on LinkedIn, get, get some reviews, get some people to write some, you know, referrals for you. And I'm like, fuck off. Like, I don't fucking feel like doing that today. I'm fucking in anxiety. And you're like, okay, get it done. And phone me back tonight by 10. And I'm like, fuck off. I don't need that. Right. Now. I don't need to add more pressure. I want to just fuck off. I'll, can we talk tomorrow? Right. But she's, I had to be okay with self-regulating what I needed now and saying, let's do it another time, not let's not do it, right? But I could tell in her voice, she was like disappointed. Like, no, no, we don't have to do it today. And like, you don't understand, like my brain's full. I, I really don't need another to do to do today, honestly, right? I did my fucking list. I got all my shit done. I, no, but she's a, she's a fucking pusher doer. Like do it at 10 o'clock. Tell me tonight that you're gonna do it. Like, I'm not, I don't, I don't like being pushed that way. It's yeah. sort of like, I wanna intrinsically be pushed. Like, hey, Lisa, would it be, you know, what, do you think you'd get something done by Friday? Do you think that would be reasonable to have one person write your, and then she went and rec wrote me a recommendation and I thought, oh, well, that's actually pretty easy. And then I sent it off to two other people. So I did do something, but when I get pushed that way, that's like a fucking, you better have to do it. Okay, good. Check mark. Great. That doesn't, that energy is, not, is I get, do that, do that yeah. push back thing. I got you. Right. Just like today, everybody telling me six different ways to write this proposal. And I'm like, Lisa, you have to make, you got all your information now. You have to make your own decision from your gut. You have to, you know, because some guys, they have a high value in money. They're like, fuck, you can't give that away. You got to do it for 4%. Don't do two. That's way too low. Other people, oh, you know, one's, one's lots. So, but I don't know. So I, I did it. Took me five hours to write two paragraphs today. Whoa. I literally phoned, talked to six different people today about what kind of, how much my base salary should be and how much compensation should I get? Commission should I get if I sell a new home? This is like, it was daunting, <laughs> daunting. Because I kept talking to all these people and getting confused and well, what's right? And they said, well, Lisa, it's ridiculous. Nobody asks, you know, what salary, what commission they tell you. What, why are you like, how many homes do they sell and, and what's their market? And do they have any marketing budget? And I'm like, I don't know. I fucking didn't tell me oh, like, and I'm like spinning around and well, I do it like this. Well, do them, tell them, forget it. Tell them just whatever. And I'm like, no, I need a response. I can't just go, well, fuck it. Right. So I finally just made a nice little, you know, balance beam of, well, between this and this and between this and this, so that I wasn't stuck to anything. I was on the low side and the high side. So I couldn't fuck up. I figured I put the low, the lowest I could go and then really high, which would be pretty great and left it at that. And where's the proposal being sent? I sent it to the headhunter. Hmm. She's the one orchestrating the, there's like, I hadn't even got to interview stage. I just had to answer literally 22 questions that took me eight, now 12 hours to finish. 
12 hours of my time to write plus my resume. So what's your marketing experience? What did you learn in your last three jobs? What would you do differently? Uh, you know, what's your leadership style? What's your writing style? It's like, wow, you're fucking making people run through the fucking ring. Why don't you find some three really fucking good questions? What's the best marketing idea you ever had? And what were the results? Like just make, like I was blown away by 22 questions and they weren't just, that's your favorite color. These were like, I took me a long time to put that shit together. Like, you know, what are your faults? What are your strengths? I'm like, oh, fucking spelling and grammar. Like when I don't have enough time, spelling and grammar. Like that's what I put on there. Cause I'm like, I don't have enough fucking time to prove my work. Right. Move at Mach 10. Is this for the headhunter or for the job the headhunter is taking you to? For the headhunter. Well, it's for the headhunter to give to her clients. Okay. It's her list. It's what she does. Okay. So stupid. They're so juvenile. What, you know, what are the last three jobs you had? And why did you leave? Like, uh, you're, really? How about like, this is a role. It's a description. Do you think you could do it? Then how or what? I don't know. I was like, I, I wrote some kooky stuff in there just for fun. Like, where's the new home market going? I don't know. It's not my fucking market. It's your market. Now you want me to do fucking market research for you like to get the job? Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, green homes, greenhouses inside homes where you've got your own herbs and their own. That's what should be in the kitchen now. And we should have vascular technologies because we need one fucking good product that will help the whole family, no matter how old you get. You need an infrared sauna. Like I just like, whatever. I just fucking sure. You should be fucking, these should be normal things in people's homes, infrared saunas and some kind of home gym technology, not fucking life cycle and fucking bullshit. Like that's what I'm saying. You know, lots of more, way more storage, like in stairs, in hidden in walls, like stuff that you can open up and clean up. Like fucking, it should be like technical shit. Hi, Genoa. Genoa, you want to say hi to Lisa? Hello. What up, Mike? Is she here? Oh, all right. Well, I gotta go pick up my daughter. They had their sex ed talk today, so I want to find out what they spilled in their brains. But I have to unjig, <laughs> unjig the jiggy. Well, thanks, thanks for that. It was nice chatting with you. And I don't feel that motivated. I don't think I. I put that well, up. You know what, Elijah, I think this is the thing with you and I. It's, it's kind of like we can't sprint a marathon every time. And sometimes it's just getting on the call and seeing each other and connecting. And maybe it's that you show me that Merkaba symbol. And in my mind, I'll never forget that. And it's meaningful. Or that those three things, just to balance out, find a new perspective or you know, learn something new, whatever that is. And maybe just hearing your voice. Maybe that I can say whatever I need to say and just be honest with you is just therapeutic. Like, I, I don't know, right? I, like I said, like it doesn't have to be like rock star performance every time. It's just good to stay. I want to try, I don't want to forget about doing this with you. I want to stay on a cadence of, okay, what shit you working on now? How's it like for you? Because I'm going to have bad days and bad weeks. Yeah. Right? I don't usually get this bad of anxiety. Like I haven't got this in a long time. So I know shit is going on. Yeah. Right? So it's like, Less more, drinking, more meditating, more outside walks. I love you. I believe in you. I know it'll get better. One day it's going to get great, but uh, <laughs> until then. <laughs> Enjoy my peanut butter sandwiches. Uh huh. <laughs> you like peanut butter? I love peanut butter. Yeah. Say hi to your daughter. Hey. And uh, see you next okay. week. Bye. So are we doing Tuesdays? Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs>